Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about Crisis on Infinite Earths, the new crossover that is coming next year. We have some new comments from the head of the CW, Mark Pedowitz, and also an interesting spot from last episode confirms that there are lots more Earths out there in the multiverse than just 90 that we know of so far. So we're going to be talking about that all in this video, so if you do go on to enjoy the video, Please be sure to leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. Okay, so let's first talk about the addition of extra Earths, right, in the multiverse. So the multiverse is a concept that refers to the existence of infinite Earths essentially in the multiverse, in the different universes that makes up the multiverse. And essentially these Earths, like we found out, are mirror Earths of our world, or they're parallel, or they're very similar, or they perhaps are very different, like say Earth 90, Earth X, which was, you know, we never won World War II, the Nazis won, and then, you know, everything went to shit from there, so very different. But essentially on the Flash, we got introduced to the idea that there were originally only 52 known Earths, in the multiverse with an extra couple of Earths actually been found out later and then it jumps up to 90 with Crisis on Earth X and so Earth X is Earth 90 and just last episode you could have easily missed it and I didn't even mention it in my review I would sort of skim past it until I went back and looked at parts of the episode and it was that Sherlock Wells in one of his speeches confirmed there is 221 Earths so it seems like there is an ever-expanding amount of Earths, and I think this is a good thing, because this gives us infinite possibilities of where we can go in the future, whether it's on The Flash or any of the other shows, and you can bring in infinite amounts of characters, you can change, you know, the way characters look, the way they are, the way sort of these people interact with different people, and I think that's very interesting. And we know Crisis on Infinite Earths is coming up very soon, we're going to probably see a lot of those characters from those different Earths. So, last episode, so, like I said, Sherlock talked about there being another Earth, and this Earth he talked about was Earth 221. And he talks about how he had used the mind machine that he used in the episode that was kind of a bit like Inception, and what Christopher Nolan used in his film, and this included a battle with Jarvis Tetch, and he is the Mad Hatter, and he was confirmed to be from Earth 221, which is obviously a massive revelation that the Mad Hatter exists just in the Arrowverse which is really awesome as well because he's a great Batman villain but anyway he confirms that he's from Earth 221 and I believe Sherlock's been there on one of his adventures so yeah there's more there is not just 90 221 and with the ever expanded number you would have to assume that the infinite amounts of planets out there you know different versions of our earth means that the devastation that the anti-monitor is going to create when the anti-monitor actually finally comes in the crossover is going to be absolutely humongous and i think they're doing this for a reason they're sort of introducing more and more of so that we can have those characters maybe just pop up for like one episode or like a couple of scenes in Crisis on Infinite Earths just to fuel the fan service and we know Mark Pedowitz is actually very very into sort of audience reaction and how they actually react and so in an interview recently at one of the sort of upfront events Mark Pedowitz announced that they're renewing all the CW DC TV shows including as well Riverdale and some other shows as well. He was quoted of saying it actually does. It actually whets the audience's appetite, which is something that is great. To have an anticipatory feeling about it because you're starting to see on social media. So it doesn't really make sense as quote, but essentially what he's doing is saying the reason why they unveiled it was to get that anticipation up, to get those levels up for the crossover rather than having to wait a long time and you know actually finally getting round to it but to do it straight away in the crossover to have those scenes with Psycho Pyro and all the other characters and the final ending scene to set up the crossover is just perfect and it's perfect marketing on their point and so yeah in regards to the Flash I think they're setting up all these different nerfs so that we can have different heroes and like I've said recently when the Elso's crossover was on I believe that the crossover 
that being Crisis on Infinite Earths, should be more than just three or four episodes. So that being Supergirl, The Flash, Arrow, and Legends, if Legends comes back, and I'm presuming it is, because obviously we got the renewal, but it would be stupid not to include it because Crisis on Infinite Earths is such a big storyline. It's one whole massive sort of chunk of comic books. And if they were to do it in like three or four episodes, I think that's really pushing it because they can barely fit everything in in, say, Elseworlds, which I loved, but really, if they had more time, they could do a lot more, and I believe with this, they definitely need more time than just three or four episodes. I believe that they should take a whole week up on the CW schedule, have it every night, even if the shows aren't on, just have a special time slot for Crisis on Infinite Earths, so we can build up to this massive climax. Crisis on Infinite Earths will be the biggest thing on television that you can remember if they were to do that, so I... I'm really rooting for this. Someone better like create some sort of petition or poll in order to get the CW to do that because I don't know if they're going to be able to do it justice in say three or four episodes. So we'll have to wait and see. But anyway, let's talk more about what Mark Pedowitz said in regards to the crossover and so he went into a bit more detail and so he's quoted of saying this, it will be the biggest and most complicated crossover yet. And that is the intent, to make some big swings. I can't tell you if it will follow the comic book version, but it will take some big swings. We're talking about a number of different ways to go. It is Crisis on Infinite Earths, so the first bit he says, it will be the biggest and most complicated crossover yet. So what does that mean? Okay, so if you look back at the other crossovers, you have Crisis on Infinite Earths, you have Crisis on Earth X, which is so confusing because we have Crisis on Earth X and Crisis on Infinite Earths, I always say it backwards. I'm sure some of you guys do that as well. But we had Elseworlds, we had Heroes vs. Aliens, we had the ones before Supergirl and Legends and everyone got involved which was just some of the Flash and Arrow ones. So those were smaller, but when you think of how complicated Elseworlds and Crisis on Earth X actually were, they are pretty complicated. So the fact that they're going to get even more complicated with Crisis on Infinite Earths is very intriguing. Obviously, if you've read the comic book, it's one of my favorite comic books of all time, if not my favorite. It is very long, and it has a lot of story strands and threads and different things that goes on throughout the whole thing. So it will be complicated, and that's why I think it should be like a week-long showing, or like one whole film, or just all of it mashed together night after night. And so what he says next, and that is the intent to take some big swings. I can't tell you if it will follow the comic book version, but it will take some big swings. Okay, he says he can't tell you if it will follow the comic book version, but later he is quoted of saying it is Crisis on Infinite Earth. So we can take from this that it's going to be related to the comic book version, but it's not going to be exactly the same. So from this, you can probably presume they're not going to kill Barry Allen and they're not going to kill Supergirl like they do in the comics. So I think my theory right now is they're going to switch it around. Maybe instead of Barry, it might be Jay Garrick who comes in the crossover and dies, or it might be Wally West or another speedster. I think that's definitely the way that they can go from, you know, not deferring too far from the comic book version, but having a similar person die and, you know, maybe Supergirl holding Superman in her arms when he's dying or Jay Garrick or Wally, you know, running and disintegrating. That would be insane. So I think they will differ a bit, but they will follow the comic book storyline in some way or another, as he says. OK, so moving on to the next bit. We're talking about a number of different ways to go. It is Crisis on Infinite Earths. And if you know the history, things collapse. So what he teases here is that they are sort of thinking of different ways to go from the comics. They want to veer off one way, perhaps the other, and another way perhaps that is very different or very similar or, you know, reminiscent of the comic book. So I don't know what to expect, but I believe it will follow a rough guideline, but maybe they will exclude some of these characters because there's so many that they can't include all of them. That makes sense. It's TV. It's not, you know, drawing a comic book or anything like that. But he is quoted of saying, if you know the history, things collapse. And so the idea that, yeah, a lot of these Earths are going to actually collapse and break down and get destroyed and merge together, which is massive. So, I believe in the crossover, perhaps, as we've been theorizing for a long time, I think Earth 38 might get merged with Earth 1. I think that is a high possibility right now. And I believe maybe some of the Earths that we've visited, maybe Earth 19, 
Earth 3 where Jay Garrick is. Maybe some of those Earths are going to get destroyed that we're familiar with. Maybe Earth 2, but Earth 2 is a bit more prominent. We have Harry still over there. Yeah, I'm actually thinking, we haven't seen Harry in a while. I would like him back. But yeah, so that is what's going on. And that's what Mark has actually teased about Crisis on Infinite Earth. So get ready for that. And what's your reaction and what's your thoughts about them, confirm them confirming that there is at least 221 other alternate Earths now currently in the Arrowverse. So anyway, guys, I'll see you guys later. Goodbye.